Hello and welcome to this GCSE explainer on food supply. This is a positive one today. Different strategies can be used to increase food supply. And um, it is positive. You know, a lot of the topics that we've covered so far have been about food insecurity, how people don't have enough access to food, undernourishment, famine. Um, but there are positives and we are capable of producing more food on planet Earth today than we than we ever have done before and it's thanks to a lot of these techniques so we'll go through a few of them so here's irrigation okay so you can see water being uh, sprayed onto blueberries you can see an irrigation channel in in bangladesh there flood irrigation um, and irrigation is just the application of water to land in order to supply crops and other plants with necessary the necessary water it needs um, and it's used to maintain plant productivity and growth when water supply is Low. So in the UK, we have reasonably seasonal water um, and plants might need irrigating in the summer months. Um, in monsoonal areas, um, during the wet monsoon it, across India and Bangladesh, uh, they can produce ample food. But if they can hold water back for the dry monsoon, um, that will increase or double the amount of food that they can grow. Um, irrigation is crucial to about a fifth of the world's food supplies and uh, irrigated land makes up about one-fifth of the total arable area that's crop production in developing countries okay those systems increase food supply but it can cause a bit of damage because um, it reduces water tables and river levels um, they also increase evaporation losses of water and also adds mineral salts to the to the soil so uh, that's that's irrigation uh, a different way of watering plants in a more modern method is by using aeroponics and hydroponics so you can see an aeroponic system here and a hydroponic system as well um, aeroponics is basically where you spray a fine mist of water um, over plants that are growing without the use of, of soil okay um, so that involves growing plants suspended in greenhouses with their root systems exposed um, and the roots can be sprayed with uh, mist with nutrients in it. Um, that system's good as it requires less nutrients and water as they go directly onto the roots of the plant and are not lost into the soil. Uh, the plants can be moved around easily, uh, less space is taken as the plants can be stacked up on shelves one on top of the other. There's a video later in this uh, lesson where you can see um, plants and salad being grown out of tubes, big tall tubes. Okay, uh, but it is expensive, um, so it's less of an option for, for some poorer countries and it requires specialist knowledge. Oh, and the one last other thing, um, it's easier to control pests in those environments as well. Hydroponics is very similar. Uh, the plants are growing in using mineral nutrient solutions in water without soil. So rather than spraying it on it, they just grow within the water itself. When the plants have roots dangling into the nutrient solution, which provides for their needs. The next one uh, that the exam board want you to know about is the new green revolution and the use of biotechnology. Yep. So uh, just a, a note there, the original green revolution uh, involved changing uh, farming in poorer countries, um, mainly in the 19s, between 1940 and the 1960s. And the idea was to transfer technology using aid money um, from rich countries like Europe and the United States. Um, and it mainly went into Asian agriculture in countries like India okay um, and there was a lot of research uh, and using the resources the Asian countries had one key feature of that was using um, a bit of biotechnology so um, study was done in a high yielding varieties of, of crops of wheat rice and maize um, and those seeds were, were distributed to farmers and that increased yields by as much as 40 percent um, it worked well in many areas, but also led to, to debt for some farmers because they had to borrow money to pay for everything. Damage to the natural environment because there was more use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Okay, And the groundwater became more polluted and the overuse of water led to water shortages. The new green revolution um, is similar, but it focuses in Africa rather than Asia. And as you'll remember from a lot of the maps that we saw in sub-Saharan Africa, those are the areas where... Uh, we have the greatest food insecurity and the greatest amount of undernourishment. So it involves the combination of modern technology, traditional knowledge and an emphasis on farming, especially in poorer countries. Okay, And at the same time, 
it emphasizes alternative approaches and improved farm management and information systems to minimize environmental damage. So we've tried to learn from the original green revolution. So a couple of examples, breeding of crop varieties that can withstand adverse conditions like salt tolerant rice, drought resistant sorghums and millets, soil nutrient cycling through crop rotation and biomass recycling, and then a reliance on genetic pest and disease resistance to replace chemical or mechanical pest control. Biotech um, could be the future of food. Um, it's the application of science towards food, tech, food supply. So it involves manipulation through genetic engineering of living organisms to produce useful commercial products. Okay, so that's useful as it produces plants and animals that have certain characteristics to help them cope and thrive in different environments. And that's gone on for, for millennia. Uh, you know, the Inca moved wheat up the, up the mountain sides um, so that it could resist uh, colder temperatures over, over many, many decades and centuries. Okay, uh, so there's lots of different uh, modifications. Uh, so you can produce insect repellent crops, which reduces pesticide use, producing crops which resist disease, producing crops which take longer to go off or perish. And there's a, there's a few other things on there, a couple of examples. So, you, you know, golden rice, uh, carotene gene was injected from, from carrots or put in from carrots into rice. And that means that people lacking in vitamin A in their traditional diet can make the vitamin if they eat the modified rice. And there's a couple of, couple of others on there, a couple of other uh, practical applications. A slightly less controversial option is appropriate technology. So uh, it's improving farmer methods using simple simple technology basically. So it goes around the idea that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish and you feed him for, for life. Uh, and appropriate technology tends to be labor intensive, sustainable, it uses new developed technology that's low cost and local and it doesn't damage the local environment. So you've got an example there from um, Appropriate Technology Asia and they've invented this greenhouse that um, can be put in mountainous areas of Asia and prolong the growing season and, and allow them to produce fresh vegetables when they, they previously couldn't, um, even used at heights of over 2,700 metres. So that's the, that's the strategies in terms of tasks. Um, you need to match up these uh, keywords, now that I've been through them, with the definitions. Then uh, pop the words in the first column of a table, okay, to match them up. You can watch the video on um, hydroponics. You can see those tubes that I talked about earlier, okay. How is aeroponics and, and hydroponics different? And then pop that in the row of the table I've just shown you. There's a video there on the green revolution, the new green revolution. So you can use that for the for the next chart thing in the chart. So you should have covered already aeroponics, hydroponics and the new green revolution. And then use this web page here to look at irrigation, biotech and appropriate technology in the in the table. OK, um, as usual, there's a worksheet available for you to do all of that and type in. And we'll just finish up with a little a little joke. Uh, what's the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Anyone can roast beef. <laughs>